We are extremely happy to have Amy with us today. Please give her a warm welcome of applause. Oh, thank you, Kim. That was such a nice welcome. Good morning, everybody. I have to tell you, I was down here early. I was down here about 8, you know, and I was in a little bit of a panic because there were, you know, three or four people in the room. So thank you for getting up early and coming out here. I really am thrilled to be with you. Now, the topic is how will the stock, stock market react to the election this year? Wow, what a year we've had. What, what do you guys think about the elections? Has it been interesting? It certainly has not been dull, has it? Right, so how is this going to impact us as investors? How will, the, how will the results of this year's elections affect us as investors? Well, let's take a look. Will the Donald make America great again? I love it. I love the passion. What about Bernie? Everything's going to be free. <laughs> I love it. You guys are great. Thank you for participating. Who's ready for Hillary? <laughs> OK. Thank you so much for your participation. You know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's elected president. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, it matters for the future of America. I know that. And I'm very sensitive to everybody's feelings, no matter which side of the fence you're on. My point is, for us as investors, I'm going to show you historically how it doesn't matter. You can do well no matter what they're doing in Washington. Whether they mess things up or whether they get it right, we can do well as investors. You know why? because it's American entrepreneurs just like you. How many of you in here have like a little small business? Okay, good, thank you. You know what, do you think that Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, do you think that they were saying, gee, I can't create a great product because I'm worried about Washington. Now they may be politically active and they may favor either a Democrat or a Republican, but at the end of the day, do you think that they are not innovating? Do you think that they are not creating great products? There are people out there. What about Elon Musk? Do we think Elon Musk right now is not going to do the best job that he can at the Gigafactory, the battery? Do you think he's not going to continue to innovate? Of course not. America is full of entrepreneurs, and God bless America. This is what makes America wonderful. And these entrepreneurs will continue. There are people creating things right now, products that we haven't even heard of that we will use. Who thought that they knew they needed an iPhone? And now can you live without it? Right? Who would have thought of that? These are the, the innovators that we have. So in every single market cycle, we are going to have what we call super stocks. Okay, these are stocks that make massive moves in the market. And they, these are innovative products that all of us are going to use. That's what makes a super stock. Take a look at some of the gains that you could have gotten from some of the super stocks in the past. We have Taser, and you can go back to 1880 to Tennessee Coal. And decade after decade, there are these huge monster winners. Take a look at them. I only went back to 1979, and we have Walmart. Now, that was the beginning of the first superstore. That's at the bottom of the list here. The very first big box retailer, that was a huge game changer. We don't think of it now, but that was a big game changer. What about Taser? Big, huge monster move, you know, an alternative to bullets. Chipotle Mexican Grill, something that was healthier and lighter. How about we have Celgene? I was talking to somebody today about the innovative products that they have. What about cybersecurity? That became a huge problem. You know, we had Home Depot was hacked into, the federal government was hacked into, so we have Palo Alto Networks that made an enormous move. But in every market cycle, there are going to be these huge super stocks. So these products, whether we know about them or not, they're going to do something that's, that solves a problem for us. Or something like we said, we didn't know that we wanted an iPhone until we had it in our hands and we realized we couldn't live without it. And the big earnings numbers that these products and services create capture the attention of the professional investor. And King Kong is everything in the stock market. King Kong controls the stock market. And who is King Kong? 
King Kong are the pension funds, the hedge funds, the banks, the mutual funds. This is the institutional money that comes into the market. And why should we pay attention to what they do? Because they control 90% of what happens in the stock market. So what advantages do we have as individual investors compared to King Kong, the institutional investor? We're smaller, right? We can move in and out of the market with ease. So compared to King Kong, we are the little pygmy marmosets. <laughs> and I want you to remember this. You know, if a stock goes against you, you can sell it, right? If you want to add to your position, you can do it. If I'm a great big huge mutual fund, you know, it may take me days or weeks or months to fill my position. So you have a huge advantage being small in the stock market. So I want to take a look at some past super stocks. And I, as we go through these, I want you to think what made these stocks great. And we're going to talk about them. So let's start off with research in motion, the BlackBerry. Now, how many people still have a BlackBerry? Wow, I don't think I see one hand out there. Now think about this, at the time, the BlackBerry was revolutionary. You, you know, I used to see people at, you know, lawyers and business people, and they could take the office with them for the very first time. You could send your emails. This was, you know, I don't, you remember back before we all had smartphones? This was revolutionary. That's what you're looking for in a super stock, somebody that's doing something completely revolutionary out there, something that changes our lives. And we could take the office with us. Look at the huge run, huge run that Research in Motion made. They're the makers of the BlackBerry. Decker's Outdoor. You know, I was driving my daughter to junior high school, and I said, Alexandra, what are those cute little boots that all the girls are wearing? And she said, Mom, those are Uggs boots. And I, ran, I literally I ran home to see who was selling Uggs boots, and it was Decker's Outdoor. And look at the huge, massive move that Decker's made. Look at these moves in the stock market. These are super stocks. By the way, there are always shoe fads. You remember those ugly Crocs? That stock made a huge move because people in hospitals were using them, doctors and nurses were using them, you could wear them at the beach, they were comfortable, they were easy to clean. What about the LeBron James basketball shoes for Nike? Huge seller. You know, there was always a shoe fed. The Skechers, you know, the Go Walk shoes, Skechers made a big run. Uh, everyone could wear Skechers, you know, young women wear them and older women wear them. So there are always shoe fads. Keep, watch, your, watch out for those in the stock market. Now, Apple is the quintessential company. When you talk about a company that has created innovative products, and that creates big sales and earnings, that attracts the institutional investor, and that makes the stock go up. That's how it works, OK? I remember when my kids wanted for Christmas, they wanted the iPod. And it was better than any little MP3 player out there. I couldn't believe it. Then for Christmas, you know, one year they gave me the iPod Nano. Of course, we have the Macs that have improved throughout the year. What about the iPhone? Has everyone in here, in fact, let's raise your hand, how many people have had some sort of an Apple product? Look at the room. Look at this. That is a super stock. If everybody in here at some point would eat at a Chipotle Mexican grill or have an Apple product or whatever it is, that makes your super stock. OK, that's exactly what creates the super stock. Uh, let's take a look now. Look at Apple's run, these massive runs. These type of stocks can change your portfolio. And none of us are ever going to capture the exact bottom, and you're not going to capture the exact top. Do you have to? No, what if you get 100% of that move? These stocks can actually change your life if you capture them and you pay attention to what's going on in the stock market. Now, we had a bear market in 2008, and Apple corrected, along with every other stock. And then look at the run it made after that. It gave you another great big chance in, chance in the stock market. Now, I love this. I think Priceline was brilliant as a super stock. They had Captain Kirk. Remember Star Trek? I used to watch those reruns when I was a kid. But everyone around the globe knew, knew Captain Kirk. And so he was going to negotiate the right price for you. You know, you wanted to travel, you wanted to negotiate your price for your airline or your hotel, and you had Captain Kirk negotiating. And look at the huge, massive moves. A 1,700% move, a 340% move. Now here's the kicker. Here's what's interesting. Who was in office? What president was in office when this stock started to make its move? George Bush. Who was in office when this stock started to make its big second move? 
Barack Obama. So you see, no matter who's in the office, if you have a company that is blowing it out of the water in terms of earnings and sales, products that are in big demand, you're going to get a stock that will move and you will get a super stock. Let's take a look at Netflix. Netflix put Blockbuster completely out of business, didn't they? You could, for a dollar, you could you know, send something in the mail, get your movie back, I could keep it as long as I wanted. I didn't, you don't get any late fees. Literally, they put Blockbuster out of business. And then they had online streaming. You know, you can just turn it on and watch a multitude of programs. I love Netflix, still love it, absolutely. And then they came up with original content, the House of Cards, Orange is Black, companies that continually reinvent and do something that's in big demand. By the way, uh, my daughter and I rented uh, George Depardieu, who's a French star, movie star, and Netflix is creating original content for other countries. They have just launched uh, in the last several months into 160 countries internationally. I'm not predicting what this company will do. They do face competition from other places, such as Amazon and Google, but I can tell you that this original content was pretty darn good. Uh, so that, you know, I, this is how I do my research constantly. I look and see what companies are doing. Guess who was in office when this stock made its first run? George Bush. And guess who was in office when it made another big run? Barack Obama. So be encouraged. We will have opportunities in the market no matter who is in office. Chipotle Mexican Grill, the chairman and the founder of our company, Bill O'Neill, we said, Bill, we have to take you to a Chipotle. And he said, this is just another burrito, Amy. We don't, you know, it's another burrito. We took him in, and we, this was when Ch Chipotle had first opened. A line out the door, food made the way you wanted it, organic, natural, tasty. This was nothing like Taco Bell, right? Nothing like Taco Bell. And again, when I think about a super stock, think about is that someplace where we would all maybe eat? Yes, that's a mass market, that's mass market demand. And again, who was in office when Chipotle first made it for its first run? George Bush. And who was in office when it made another big run? Barack Obama. Here's another one, Baidu, the idea of a super stock. Now this is the Google of China, and millions of people were coming online for the very first time. Talk about millions and millions of people. Now that produced triple digit earnings, and gains and sales. So Baidu absolutely answered a problem. You see these super stocks, these companies solve something. They do something innovative and different. And who was in office at the beginning of Baidu's move? Bush. George Bush. Pardon me? <laughs> okay, touche. <laughs> All right, that was a good one. Who, who was in office? Uh, and they did, they did have the cooperation of the Chinese government. This gentleman is right, they did. So who was in office for the second part of this run? Barack Obama. Again, you see how these super, super stocks run and run and run. So when you're looking for a super stock and you're asking yourself, what potential do they have? Newer IPOs, a company that's doing something that's really innovative and great, double or triple digit earnings growth, all right? When, uh, when Lululemon made its run, it had eight quarters of double digit or triple digit earnings. LinkedIn had six out of seven quarters of triple digit earnings before it made that massive move. So earnings will do that for you. So at the end of the day, does it matter who gets elected to the next presidency. Yes, I know it matters for the country. I'm talking about for you as investors. You've just seen historically, I could show you another 100 or 200 stocks. No matter who's in office, if a company is doing something innovative, exciting, and wonderful, big earnings, big demand, you're gonna find the next super stock. And I'm gonna come back, Kim, to the next money show. The next time I speak to these guys, I want you to come and tell me that you found a super stock. All right, you make that promise to me? You'll try to find them. You can come back to the booth and talk to me, and whatever the market does, don't tune out. You know, it's when we get into people think we're in a bear market or the market is choppy, that's when everybody kind of tunes out. Make sure you stay plugged in, because about the time everybody is worn out, what happens to the market? It starts to take off again. I wish you all the very best in investing. Oh, two questions. Oh, I didn't know I had time. Two questions. Who has a question? Talk about a stock you own. Who wants to know what the next super stock's gonna be? Yes. Yeah, oh, if only I knew. <laughs> That's not true, let me tell you something. I want you to keep your eye on Facebook, why? They have a lot of money, 
They have not monetized WhatsApp. They haven't done a lot of different things. They, they are sitting, I think they are poised to go. Amazon, how about Amazon? What are they doing wrong? Yeah, I mean, you know, take a look at these monster companies and why do we all still need them? Why do we all need Google? I use Google every day. Google is sitting a lot on a lot of money. They're also very innovative. Anybody else have a, a question or a super stock? Yes, sir. What do you currently think about Apple? What do I currently think about Apple? That's a very good question. And I hate to never predict. That's what we don't do in the market. I'll tell you that so far, the audience was not wowed by the watch. Uh, I would say that Apple has a lot of money. They have a lot of opportunities. It depends on how they spend their money. They're sitting on a ton of money. You know, if they bought another company, they need to do something. In order for you to find the next super stock, Apple's going to have to do something innovative. Again, you see how all these companies, you can get a company. Netflix went through a correction, then they came up with streaming, and they took off again. So Apple would have to do something innovative in order for that to really run again. And until they do that, it's not a wow. It's just not a wow. It's a great company. I love Apple. I love all their products. That's another thing. Just because you love a company doesn't mean that's a good stock. Okay? You have to look at the chart. If the chart is going like this and you love the company, it doesn't matter. The chart has to be going up. Yes, sir? Why did you go from the investor's business daily to investor's business weekly? Why did we go from investor's business daily to investor's business weekly? Well. You know what, we all know that print is, is sort of going by the wayside, and so we transferred to a weekly paper, but everything that we had in the daily paper is online now. In fact, if you come by the booth, I'll show you. I'll take you through everything. You guys have been a great audience. Please come by the booth and say hi. Thank you so much.